how do you grill a good steak? I get this question all the time. And it's really just a simple one, two, three step process. So, well, let's make it four step process. The first one is buy a good steak. Here I have a nice little 14 ounce uh, ribeye. You can see that's a beautiful steak. Uh, a little bit of rich cat meat on the outside and that little loin meat on the inside. Really good looking, looking steak. So then right before you, you grill it, usually good to let it come to room temperature. You can put sometimes not too much, just a little bit of uh, olive oil on it. This will help it so it doesn't stick. You just kind of rub it with olive oil. Olive oil loves beef. Then, not ahead of time, but right before you grill it, you're going to rub a little salt and a tiny bit of pepper into it. The reason why I say not too far ahead is that salt will try to draw some liquid to the surface of the meat and it won't brown as well. So here's again the key to grilling a good steak. Here's our wood fire. I'll get to take a look at this. This is where you get a lot of heat. When you got those oak wood logs burning, you can get way up there, six, seven, eight, nine hundred degrees. It burns very, very hot. And we build the fire towards the back so that the hottest part is at the back wall of the fire and the front is not nearly as hot. So when you light a good fire then, you don't, people sometimes talk about a very even heat, it's better to have an uneven heat, sort of very hot at the back and then cooler towards the front. You have to start it out hot. So I will go to that back part of the fire where it's the hottest. You can usually hear it when it, when it goes on the grill. And what that's doing is just driving the heat and the, and the juices towards the center of the steak. And in this stage one of the hot fire, you always have to keep your eye on it. Don't run back in the house and come back out, it could be, it could be overdone. This is probably a thousand degrees right now. You gotta be patient, we've got a little good mark on it. Kinda cross it so that we, we kinda distri distribute the bar marks on it. But you can see how hot it is, that hole outside the steak is becoming kind of encased in heat so that the juices are going inward, not outward. They used to say, sear the steak to seal in the juices. You're not sealing them, you're driving them into the meat, away from the surface. I think we're getting a good sear on it. You can see, I'll pull it back for a second, how beautiful that is. The bar marks and just toasted, almost kind of crunchy the way the meat is and the fat is sort of seared. It's very seared on the outside. And there's no sign of juice. Everything was, has been driven into the meat. The thing to remember is that water, like juices, will always move away from heat. As they heat up, they expand, so they move away from where the heat source, the heat source is. So you have to think about this going towards the center. But if we let it go too long at that high heat, we'll overheat the juices, and they'll actually sort of turn into boiling liquid and begin to, to overcook the meat on the inside. So we really, this is just like when the light turns green, you step on the gas, and it's just to get it kind of going, getting that momentum, momentum working. People like to baste their steaks, and I do too. It can be quite nice. I usually avoid it at this part because the fire is so hot, anything that drips into the fire will catch fire and flame up. And once you start getting a flame up, it'll pull more of the fat out of the meat. You get more flame up. You get a very sort of charred, burned oil taste to it. So I think now we've seared this. See both sides. Look how beautifully seared that is. And this steak is still very rare, almost raw. It's only been on there a couple of minutes. Then what we do is, the way you think about it, is we, we're going to pull it at this point back to a cooler spot of the fire. You can almost see how much smoke is there so as we pull, pull back, we have much less. It's much cooler to the front. At this point, if you'd like, this is a little bit of butter, you can baste the steak at this point because when it drips in the fire, it won't catch, won't catch fire. In the back, you'll have a lot, of, a lot of fire. So when you're cooking steaks, whether you like it rare or medium rare, medium, medium well, well done, you want to think about that the same way as a rare steak is generally cooked very, very hot because it doesn't have to go in very far when you cook it. Medium rare, it takes a little more time, so you got to slow it down. Medium even more slowly. If you like a well done steak, that's when you really pull it back and let it just cook a long time slowly because it'll be juicier and much more uh, tender. It's a little counterintuitive. Some people think, oh, well done should be hotter and longer. It'll just be dry and tougher. You sear like a rare steak and pull it to the edge of the fire and then just let it slowly finish out. 
you can tell as the steak begins to cook more, it has more resistance to when it's raw. So as you touch them, you'll feel that how that steak starts to tighten up. So at this point now, because I'm kind of looking for medium rare, I'll put it way to the edge of the fire. So underneath the, the meat, there's no wood burning at all. So we can go very, very slowly. You can see how golden brown and crusty brown it is. Well, inside it'll still be really, really, really deep. And now, it's just like I saw the stop sign coming up. So I took my foot off the gas way ahead of time. I'm gonna let the steaks so just cruise until it's just done. Where those juices kind of come to the middle, but slow down just enough so they just meet at the center. It's rosy pink, and it will be, still be juicy and not tough. If it's cooked hot too long, it's very, very tough. So I think this steak is, a, is, is medium rare. I'll tell you one other little trick that uh, usually even a medium rare has no juice on the top. Once it gets to medium, because the juices have gone all the way through, it'll start to beat up some juice on the surface. So you'll actually see them. It sort of tells you that the steak is heated all the way through. Then those juices will begin to drop on the fire and you'll hear them sizzle. And so we have the saying that you can usually hear a steak that's overcooked because the juices are dropping in the fire. So you listen sometime when you hear that, those things dropping into the coals and making that hissing sound. It's medium or more at that point. So you can see that's a beautiful steak there. And that comes from that hot wood fire, probably a thousand degrees, hot burning oak. We have that beautiful perfume of the wood, the salt and the pepper sort of crusted in the meat, and then inside will be just gloriously pink and rosy and really tasty. So you gotta remember too, when that steak comes off that really, really hot fire, those juices are still hot inside, and they're sort of moving around, so it's good to, uh, Give the steak, you know, five or ten minutes just to cool down, let those juices settle so it'll be really, really tender. Otherwise, if you were to cut it, the juice will run out all over the plate. Where do you want the juice in the first place? Inside the meat. So I've let this one cool down a little bit, and we should see if we carve it. It should be beautifully rosy pink on the inside. Look at that. Oh, perfect. I mean, that's a ribeye just, and you can see how kind of tender and creamy it looks, those pieces. See how even it is all the way through because that's how gently how gently it cooks. I don't I would definitely not be unhappy with this steak. It is just gorgeous. And even at home sometimes I cook a big thick one and cut it into multiple pieces and you get a great look. That so seared on the outside and pink all the way through. In fact, that's the, that's the three points. Super hot to, to sear it, then lower the heat to let it go partially through, and then very soft at the end so it finishes rosy pink. Let it relax a few minutes before you cut into it so those juices, those juices can settle. This steak is a nice, really nice medium rare. You can see by the red rosiness. All we have to do for medium is leave it at the edge of the fire for another three, four minutes, and it'll slowly go to medium. You leave it for another four to eight minutes, it'll be medium well under slow heat. Another five to ten minutes, very slowly, it'll be well, well done. All the pink will be gone, but it'll still be juicy because we finished up slow. We let it kind of come to a, to a nice, nice stop. We didn't dry the juices right out of it. I'm a big ribeye fan. We buy great beef at RDG, and this ribeye steak's been on the menu for the last last 20 years is one of my favorites. We have it every night and uh, cut big and thick and grill like this, really, really good. But we also have great New Yorks too and great fillets too. But, uh, overall, I like beef. I like cooking over that big wood fire. Really tasty. This is very, very good.